Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 80s Morphal Four. So today, guys, we're going to talk about Barcelona versus Espanyol. So we're going to go ahead and talk about this match. So this is a Catalan derby. Um, it should be interesting to see what happens. Match day 15. And um, I got the image from the Barcelona website here. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at this. So the kickoff time is going to be at 8 a.m. Eastern time um, in the U.S. And um, it's going to take place on Saturday, December 31st. Okay. So let's go ahead and look into the... Um, the timeline here, the insights coming into this game. So let's go ahead and look at the insights. So Barcelona versus Spain. Let's look at the stats first. So Barcelona is expected to win at 76%, draws 14%, and a win for Espanol is 8%. Okay, insights. So Barcelona are unbeaten in the last 24 games against Espanol on La Liga. Win 18, draw 6, the longest run without a defeat against them in the top flight. The last such defeat... It dates back to February 2009, a game that current Barcelona manager Xavi Hernandez played in. Interesting. Since a 2-1 defeat for Cespai in February 2009, Barcelona have won their 12 games, home games against them in top flight, keeping 10 clean sheets in these matches. They've won more games at home against Espanyol and La Liga than, any against, than against any other opponent. Interesting there. Barcelona collected 37 points after 14 games in La Liga 2020-2023, equaling their second highest tally at this stage of the season in the competition, 37 points, 2010 2011, and trailing only the 2012, 2013, 2013, 2014 campaigns, 40 points, win 13, draw one, and both. Espanol have won only one of the, two of their last 14, two of their first 14 La Liga games in 2020 2023, uh, equaling the lowest tally of wins in stage in the season in the top flight. Uh, Barcelona kept the most clean sheets of the big five European leagues this season. This is the highest tally of clean sheets after the first 14 matches of La Liga season in the 21st century. So, some interesting insights there. So, like I said, guys, um, now that you guys know the information, um, let's talk about Espanyol real briefly here. So, Espanyol currently this season have been, are doing decent this season. You know, obviously, um, you know, they survived last season, which is um, interesting to say the least. And I'm currently, right now, they are currently 16. So, they're battling, battling relegation this season. And um, it's going to be difficult because their goal difference is minus 6. 16 goals scored and 22 goals conceded. And as you guys heard from the stats, they only won two games this season. The amount of draws have been helping, though. So the last game they played competitive-wise was against Villarreal, in which they lost at home with a 1-0 defeat to them. And then they drew against Atletico Madrid. They drew against Mallorca, and they drew against Elche. So I think it's fair to say that this um, Espanol team is going to be very difficult to break, play against. And they don't concede a lot of goals, as you guys can see. They've only conceded one or two goals. Um, and that's actually pretty, pretty impressive. You know, ever since that game against Real Madrid... They have only just conceded two or one goal, and then against Sevilla as well, of course. Yeah, getting back to this game, though, um, let's look at the, some of the available players. So the players that they have for this game, um, most of the players will be available for this game. The three players that will not take part in this game are as follows. Danny Gomez, Daniel Gomez, who is suspended for this game. Um, he will not be available for this game. Keita Barry will not be available, and Andrea Pedroso will not be available. As for the expected 11, we should see the same 11 that they played midweek um, against, uh, what is it called, Copa de Rey second round. Um, we should see pretty much around the same potential 11. Maybe we could see Loco Moment. Um, Braithwaite would definitely start Alex Vidal, Sergio, Sergio Gomez, Fernandez, uh, Oscar Gill, Lazo, Joe Slow, you know, these kind of players. And um, look out for these players. I'd say um, look out for Braithwaite, of course, you know, former Barcelona player. Of course, he would want to score against us. And Sergio Dardar as well would be very influential. Um, and I think those are dangerous players to look out for. So look out for Braithwaite and Sergi Dardar. Okay, so now that we kind of talked about Espanyol briefly, let's go ahead and look at the Barcelona. So Barcelona coming into this are in a great run of form. Barcelona have been ruling this season, you know, picking up wins, um, you know, coming off a win against S, um, sorry, against Osasuna in the last game, away from home, a game there were 10 men as well. They had to grind out the win. Then a 2-0 win against Almeria. Then a 1-0 win against Valencia. 4-0 win against Athletic Club. 3-0 win against Villarreal. So, you know, ever since that Real Madrid El Clasico defeat, Barcelona have been generally been really, really good since then. So, it's going to be interesting. You look at this combat, this month in particular. We have Espanol at home. Then we have Atletico Madrid on the road. At the Juana Metropolitano. And then we have Getafe. And then we have Girona to round off. So, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be an interesting month. And um, we have very winnable games. I think the the really the difficult game we really have is the two away games. I think the two away games are going to be very difficult for Barcelona to play. 
As for the available players, we should have everyone available for this game, with the exception of Lewandowski, who's suspended for three games. So he'll miss pretty much all the La Liga games this month and should be back for the final La Liga game, which is against Girona. So now we're going to do the expected 11. Let's go ahead and look through the expected 11 real quick. So this is 11 that I think uh, Xavi will roll out um, for the game um, against Espanyol at the camp now. And I do have some stuff to say. This is Keep in mind, this is the, the 11 that I expect, not the 11 that I want. So, obviously, I think he's going to start Ter Stegen in goal. I think that's pretty much undisputed. Obviously, I think Alejandro Baldi will start the left back. And then it gets a little tricky in the defense. I think it gets a little tricky. I think Christensen should start. Um, I don't think he's in badly any injury concerns, so he should start the game. Um, I think Jules Kounde will probably be a center back for us because I don't think Araujo will be. Even though he is back, I don't think he will be 100% ready to start just you know because he's hasn't played in so long. So, I don't think he's going to be used like that. And then obviously I think Roberto will be used at the right back position. Um, so, yeah. And then obviously we also have um, the, the midfield, which should be Busquets, Pedri, and Gavi. I expect to see that midfield. And then we're going to see um, the front three is going to be really interesting. I think we're going to see Dembele on the left, Fati in the middle, and Rafinha on the right. So this is probably the one of the rare opportunities we're going to see Dembele and Rafinha. So now I have some questions. Okay, these are the questions I think Xavi have to address to win this game. Okay. So my first big question is, what will Barcelona's attack be like? And my big cons my big thing to worry is about the striker position. I think that's the really the big question, because I think it's fair to say that Rafinha Dembele will probably be locked in starters. I don't think there's any debating that. It's going to come down to who's going to be that striker position, because you have Memphis Depay, you also have Ansu Fati, and technically, you can also play Ferran Torres at the striker position. Let's go case by case. Um, Depay, for me, I don't really think he's that great. Um, we just saw in the World Cup that he wasn't that amazing. And he was a bit, you know, he had to battle through injury. And I think he is obviously 100% recovered. Um, I just don't really know if I would trust Depay in this kind of game, especially in a Catalan derby. And then for Ferran Torres, we haven't really seen him being played as a striker that much. And so, for me personally... There's a lot of gamble with those two players. Whereas Ansu Fadi barely played the World Cup. He should be fit to go. And um, I just think that he should be he should be motivated. Like this is his big opportunity for him to make a statement, especially against, you know, your local rivals, of course. So, you know, that's my first big question is who's gonna be that um striker? And then the second thing is um how is the midfield gonna be like? Because I know for a fact that Espanol will be very physical in this game. Espanol is a very aggressive team, they're very very much attackless. They love to make commit tackles. And we know how much Espanol really cares about these games because this means so much to them. And it's not been easy to play against them in the recent seasons. You know, I remember last season we battled it out to get a draw against them at the, the stadium and we had to get a last minute equalizer with Luke de Jong. Even in the game of the camp now, it was difficult. So it's going to be very, very difficult to break down this Espanol team. And I just feel as though that Busquets isn't, I don't think Busquets would suit us in this game. I think Busquets would actually be a liability for us. Because, um, you know, the amount of tackles are going to make um, there. And we need someone to be press resistant. And I just feel like Frankie de Jong is the player that should be in a CDM position. Okay. And then my next concern is that defense. The defense for me is another concern. Because for me, we have to ensure that um, Kunde can do a job at the center back position. Because for me, if we start Alonso in this game, which I could see Xavi doing that, which is very possible. I don't think he will. At least I hope he doesn't then I think we're going to be really, really um, screwed in that sense because Alonso is just not a center back. I, I don't know how many more times I have to tell you this. I don't know how many more times the VAR needs to know this. He just isn't a center back. And I couldn't. I wouldn't be surprised to see Xavi put Alonso at center back because our defense is going to be very sketchy because Alejandro Balde, as good as he is, defensively is not that great, let's be real. And Roberto, of course, we know defensively is not that great. And if you put Alonso there at the center back... <laughs> It's only Kunde, pretty much. Like Kunde's the only one, and he's not. He can't do everything alone. So, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So, I think for Barcelona to win this game, we have to try to use Frankie De Jong, and we have to not. We have to use Christensen. If we can use Frankie De Jong, Christensen, and Fati as the three choices, then I think we are we should win this game. As for my score prediction, guys, I'm going to go with a Barcelona to win this game. Of course, Barcelona should win this game. I'm going to say they win. I think they're going to win 2 now. I think they're going to win 2 now at the camp now. Um, it's going to be a close game, though. I think uh, Espanyol will definitely give a, um, a valiant effort. 
I think Barcelona will score second half goals, and I feel like the first goal will be scored by um, Pedri, and I think the second goal will be scored by Ansu Fati. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Hopefully Barca can win this game because this is a must-win game. Well, not necessarily a must-win game, but this is a game that Barca should be winning. And, of course, it's the last game of, of this year in particular. So, everyone, guys, be after the game, guys, I'll do a live reaction here on the channel. Um, it will be my last stream of this year, so I hope I can see you guys then. So, make sure you guys like the stream if you have. I mean, like, not like the stream, sorry. Like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe if you want comment down below your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm um, real, guys. Check out me in my other classes in the description below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.